What's up? Three. I can't tell who's there though. I have the phone sideways. Which I like landscape better. I don't know why it doesn't allow you to, to do more. But um I will use this to see who's there. I think I can do that. Not quite sure. Voila. see myself <laughs> I will use I can see myself <laughs> right this is weird uh, who's Michael McClure hey what's going on all right I need to turn this off because it's weird all right so am I sideways do I have to do it the crappy way why can nothing be easy? So, Mike, you're the first one. Well, there were three people. Now it's just you. But I am trying to be more social, I guess. Uh, I don't get out much. I work a lot. I'm focused on career stuff. And I forget sometimes to just let my hair down what little I have left of it <laughs> and go out and do stuff but there's so much going on that I don't have the time by the time I'm finished with work it's you know you need sleep you need you need rejuvenation and food and stuff like that so I figured let me go try this thing out for a little bit because I get a lot of messages from you guys and uh, uh, tweets and and all kinds of cool stuff and I'm always responding as much as I can and I want to stay connected with you because I know you guys are out there but there's so much time in the world and there's too little time <laughs> to get it all in so um, yeah I figured instead of making a separate YouTube series and just connecting with you guys I would try to do this more often since tomorrow's my day off and uh, Wednesdays is a little bit of downtime for me. Instead of watching a movie or trying to figure out what to do next and sit behind my computer, I figured I would come here where a lot of you guys are. And so, hey. So, let's see. The late, I think you guys pretty much know I'm neck deep in preparing a crowdfunding campaign for for last call which thank you so much for watching and and liking and sharing and all that stuff hey Matthew what's going on um, yeah I'm neck deep in doing all of that work and for me it's a one-man show you know um, preparing writing researching uh, you name it um, trying to make it exciting and and unique for people to want to participate in it's not easy and um, I want to make it easier so I'm interviewing someone for an assistant position tomorrow and it's it's retarded for me to say those words out loud as in I'm doing it for me because I'm always working for someone else who's interviewing people for for stuff and I just find it weird and um, grown up <laughs> and when I say that is because you know when I look in the mirror I I just think oh my god who's this kid trying to be a grown-up and doing what he's doing and um, it's just weird so uh, yeah tomorrow I'm gonna interview someone who is very awesome and has got a lot of experience and uh, in production and and helping people stay on schedule and and um, being a creator himself um, so I'm hoping it works out um, I have <laughs> I just went through his resume and I'm I don't even know where, where to begin to ask the questions but I think I know and I have an idea so there's that um, what else 
so much. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. But I think that I just want to say thanks to a lot of you guys. I mean, you you all have been around and watching me do crazy shit for a long time. And, um, and when I mean crazy shit, I'm talking about, you know, skin flicks and all of that and go-go dancing and live shows and all that stuff. And some of you like it, some of you judge it, and some of you have things to say about it. And I just love it all. And I just want to thank you all for for doing that. I mean, I did not plan on my path to be what it was. I, I think I just, well, let me, let me put it to you this way. Back when I was a real estate agent, and there was like 10 years under my belt doing that, I had had enough of the corporate structure, meaning I was 38 at the time, um, working 60 hours, 70 hours, 80 hours, not, not sleeping at all, uh, you know, trying to sell a house, get a listing, do this, do that, um, and try to be the best realtor I could be. What I loved about real estate is, let's see, you, you walk into, you know, your favorite department store and you see, you know, the shirt or the slacks or the hat or whatever it is that is the, the one. So my, my thing was when I would take people to see an apartment or a house to, that was for sale or for rent, the, the spark and the light that would go off in their eyes is um, what gave me a lot of joy because you could tell it was that, that's the one. It's the one for them. And I wanted to make everything happen for them and get them, get them the place of their dreams. Hold on, I'm going to adjust the light here so it could be a little bit more, I don't know. I chose the black and white to hide the blemishes because, you know, I'm going to be 50 and I still have acne like a 14 year old. Anyway, I loved that part of real estate. What I didn't like was the, um, the competitive nature of it all. And I'm being very diplomatic here because there are some people in many different uh, professions who are um, inauthentic. Uh, who lie, who cheat and steal, and um, are competitive to to a uh, to a point where they will do anything and everything to win. And I get that, but that's not the person I am. Um, I like to uh, do the best I can. If I'm able to bring someone up with me, I will do that. That's me. Um, so I had had enough of that grind. Um, I sold the last house that I would ever sell, and that was in uh, Carroll Gardens in Brooklyn, and I moved on. What did I love to do? I got into, you know, anything that I could find uh, an opportunity. So I ended up working at David Barton Gym, which a lot of you know me from the front desk there. I ended up becoming, for a short time, the front desk manager, which was really just a title. I didn't really have any kind of authority or anything. Um, so I did that for a very long time, and I worked in fitness that way. Um, I tried selling memberships at Crunch after that gig, um, and that was that was it. But in in the between David Barton and Crunch, I got into nightlife and I got into porn and that. I mean, I'm sure you've read the articles and um, heard all about that. But that I just did because I was like tuning out. You know, I'm like, fuck it. You know, I, I, if anything was going to affect my career or anything going forward, it would have happened back in my 20s. It's something I would not want that would affect anything going forward. So, you know, I just said, let's see what happens. You know, I'll do one. Nobody will know. <laughs> I was wrong about that. It got everywhere. And go-go dancing helped <laughs> it get everywhere. Um, so... The reason I bring all this up is my path. Um, I come from a theater and film background. I studied at HB Studio when I was a teenager. Um, I've trained with a lot of classical actors and, and uh, teachers. Um, 
back then I had no idea who these people were because I was a stupid kid. Now when I think back, a lot of them are no longer with us and I squandered such opportunity, which um, most young people do. No regrets, but I learned a valuable lesson. So once I realized how porn was affecting uh, my notoriety, I guess, or developing one or creating one, or I, be, I was becoming a gay liberty, <laughs> as it were, um, and Kareem will probably laugh at him if he sees this, but uh, as, it, as it became that, um, I realized I could utilize this going forward somehow, some way. I thought I was going to create my own porn studio at one point when that's why I moved to LA. You know, I got out of New York, I got tired of the, the blizzards and <laughs> and the cold weather, and I ended up in LA for a little bit, and I thought I would start that. But while I was there, there was this um, acting studio I would pass every time I went to the gym, and it just kept nagging at me. And that's when I realized the whole idea of me going to LA was not the realization that, you know, I needed to figure stuff out for myself, but I was there for that reason. I left New York to figure shit out. I just didn't want to do adult stuff anymore and I found myself falling into old habits and so I came back to New York with the plan and the plan was I was going to finish my degree, um, I was going to start taking classes again and um, hey <laughs> How are you, Morgan? Oh my gosh, baby, I love you so much. How are you? Thanks for tuning in. Um, so I mean, if you rewind this later and catch up, you'll know that part of my life in LA was Morgan McMichaels. Um, she, she's one of the most giving and honest people on the planet. And it's because of Morgan, when I made the decision to come back to New York, that I really sat home one day after a night out at... Um, I want to say uh, Mickey's. Was that Mickey's? You can say, correct me or not. We all went out for dinner afterwards and we were talking about stuff. And I realized, you know, the only way I'm going to make this happen is if I come back to New York because this is where my support system is. This is where my, yes, Mickey's. <laughs> uh, this is where my, uh, if I'm going to make it, make theater the rest of my life, the only way it's going to happen is here. And I say that because I'm a New York boy. I know where things are. I have a support system. And if I'm gonna make it here, I can make it anywhere. <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm a little bit of a snob that way, you know. Brooklyn's in my heart. I live in Manhattan, but that's it. So if I can remember where I was going with all this, so uh, yes, the the coming back, I needed to follow everything I needed to do, my instincts, my desires, my everything to make theater the rest of my life. So here I am. Uh, working part time at the Joyce Theater as an usher, and I'm I'm home after a, uh, I think it was Trocadero's was performing that day. I could be wrong. Um, I came across this article I want to say on Facebook, uh, a backstage article on Facebook, where they were talking to interviewing people who were creating actors, artists, creating opportunities for themselves, and I thought, hold on, that that's that's powerful right there creating opportunities for yourself this has been my life and I say that because there was a time when I was a kid I was in the park around the block from where we lived and um, I wanted to play with some of the kids in the park and they were mean and they said no you can't play with us and so I went home and I was crying literally and my mom was like what's wrong and I explained to her they won't let me play with them she's like you don't have to play with them create your own games what? I could create my own, I could do my, oh my god. So that's pretty much been my life, you know. I start out going somewhere and doing stuff other people are doing. I don't find that I fit in necessarily sometimes, some way, shape, or form. And I end up doing my own thing. And that's when I thought, well, I'm in LA, I could, you know, create my own streaming porn thing, but that's not what I wanted. What I wanted to do is uh, be on stage. I hadn't been on stage doing theater, not that stuff. Um, 
hadn't been on stage in a long time. I hadn't remembered lines and told a story in a long time. And so this article was very in depth, where they talked to different people and different uh, aspects of, uh, of entertainment, who created opportunities for themselves to get in front of casting directors, to get in front of agents, to get in front of an audience. And the lightning bolt that went off, I just jumped up off my bed, opened my computer, and I said, I'm going to write my memoir, which, you know, sounds ridiculous to me because, you know, like, who would want to read about my life? But I said, I'm going to write this story. And as I'm writing, I got another jolt thinking this, these past six years, five, six and a half years of experiences that no one else has, that I have, I could create a web series out of this, you know, encompassing my time in real estate, encompassing my time in porn, my time in nightlife, all the people that I've ever met who could, you know, be a part of this storytelling with some name changes to protect the identities of the few, um, I could tell the story. And it just evolved from there. And I just started writing and writing and writing. And then as I was writing, I was thinking, who could play these people? Who, who could be this? Who could be that? And it was just one after the other, after the other, a domino would fall over. Um, and that's how it came to life. Last Call is exactly that. Um, my life after I left real estate, got into fitness and porn, while wanting me personally to open my own gym, but in New York, that's that'll never happen. Uh, but for the story's sake, something that's relatable, people hang out at bars. And um, that part hit me when after I went around the corner after, <laughs> after I did some writing to have a beer at gym bar and Mayor Heller was there and I was like, Mayor, you're an actor too. Oh my God, I'm, I'm doing this thing. And we were throwing some ideas around and I decided it would be a bar and I told him he's going to play Darren. And uh, lo and behold, season one, you see <laughs> Mayor doing a brilliant job as the nightlife guru fashionista, uh, Darren Lewis. Um, so that's the beginning, the middle, and here's the present, I guess. Um, working on season two has been a long process and not because of, um, well, it's because of, of many different things, timing, you know, having to, you know, pay rent and picking up jobs here and there and looking for acting gigs to make things happen. So uh, it's, it's a process, a long process. And what I'm hoping to do this year is bring on people who can help me do the administrative side of this. Um, this is the year that I want to launch my production studio. This is the year that with everything that we're doing or that I want to do or am doing, um, that I'm not just a one man band. <laughs> um, I know there's great people out there who can who can write and who can uh, who can uh, understand the, the process that goes with this and um, so yeah that's where I am and it's uh, it's been a joy really I haven't I have not been this happy with my life ever. Well, no, let me rephrase that. The happiest times of my life was when I had a script in my hand, I was memorizing some words, and I got to say those words in front of an audience. Those are the happiest times of my life, and this is part, this is a facet of that. And, um, yeah, I wish everybody could feel this happy in what they're doing. I know many of you do, um, but I wish more of that for you. Um, so, going forward... I use that term a lot. Um, I think that, you know, checking in with you guys here more, like I said earlier, I'm not a social person only because I've got so much going on. By the time I'm done with my day, I do not want to be in a... <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. I love... I'm happy for you, too. I know you're doing wonderful things. I keep I keep tabs on you. I watch out for you, Morgan. You guys, if, if our, you guys who are watching... Um, hey, AJ, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't see you tune in there. Um, you guys got to follow Morgan. Morgan is... Um, the the epitome of entertainment she puts on a show that you you're just you're just involved in from every moment um so th this is the the year that i want to i'm sorry i, I lost my train of thought i just want to take that take those big leaps take those big strides because i posted this the other day think 
great things don't happen unless you take those big giant leaps of faith and um that's what i'm doing this year i mean who knows how much time we have left you know i'm hitting the the half century mark which blows my mind um so yeah um what else there's a lot of um there are a lot of people who are responsible for how far I've come so far. And as a matter of fact, AJ is one of them. Um, the cast, the crew, uh, friends who keep constantly telling me, you know, Mike, don't stop, keep going, do your thing. Uh, so I'm, thank you. I'm grateful. You guys writing in, chiming in, messages, and um, all that stuff. It, it's just so, so appreciated. And I'm so grateful for it. Uh, what else? I, th- I guess... I guess I can tell you that... What? The... I, I just don't want to give anything away. I want, I want to give you guys like a tidbit that you can mull over, but um, I don't want to give anything away. But... Um, oh, I can tell you this. Everyone is going to have an opportunity to actually shape Last Calls Season 2. Meaning that by the decisions you make and how you back the crowdfunding campaign is what you will actually see on film. I don't know, is that, is that vague enough or meaty enough? You guys are going to have, or everyone is going to, who, who participates is going to have uh, a hand in how it looks. And where it's done so I think that's a unique thing no one's ever done before um, and I'm hoping it goes over well. um, so yeah and uh, that's all I'm gonna say about that uh, what have you guys who's there there's two of you there I see Morgan I see Mac hey Mac and I see AJ and what else? Well, Matthew was there. I think he's still there. I can't tell if it's green what it means. It's different now. They keep changing this damn thing. I don't know anymore. But um, So I'm probably going to end up sideways at the end of this when people say they're going to have to turn their phones. But I like landscape. Why can't it just be landscape or, you know, whichever way? They can they can put restrictions, but they can't make it easy for you, can they? Blah. So uh, this is uh, the beginning of maybe a little bit more if you don't see or hear from me you know what you can do you can just say say a message where's your face show your face what you doing what's up what's going on i think oh i could i can also share this part um so where i work at the winter garden theater i'm an usher at the winter garden and right now we have school of rock and the show closes on sunday uh we're going down to the last five shows and honestly i'm i'm happy that it's ending i'm i'm a little um i'm i'm a little sad but i remember seeing the show in previews and seeing how it's how it's grown and i think it's come to for me it's come to the end of its life um so uh between now and the next show uh which is beetlejuice is coming to the winter garden i think march 28th starts previews um i have a lot of time on my hands so a lot of that time is going to be devoted to last call and production and getting ready but i am going to make a concerted effort to get out and about and see people and have drinks and dinners and uh maybe be more proactive in communicating because i can tell you my phone don't ring that much often but um and i hate being the one to to always reach out because i always feel needy hey what you doing hey you want to hang out what's going on you know i just feel weird that way but um i will just make an effort to pop out here and there uh oh yes the rumors are true about my birthday party um i am (laughs) uh go naked that group the nudists i'm a nudist um when i when i yes i'm a nudist they have uh i think it's monthly parties at rock bar so uh it just so happens the march party falls on the night before my birthday so i'm going to do that i'm going to celebrate my birthday in my birthday suit at rock bar and at midnight celebrate my 50th birthday so 50 50 i'm 50 and i kick and stretch that is the best thing ever (laughs) um so yeah if you're in new york 
And you want to party in your birthday suit with me? Come on down. Don't be shy. That's how we all got here. That's how we're all going to go. Uh, yes, I, I don't know. Well, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, so, yeah. Well, there's one person left. I have no idea who you are right now. So, if you just say, hello, I'll take a question from two people. Okay, I'll take a couple questions. Or if you want to interact right now. Or if not, I'm just going to go and... What time is it? It is quarter to eight. It's so early. I don't want to do any more work, but my brain is going. I got ideas. Distract me. Keep me from the computer. Wait, you know, I have a, <laughs> I have that interview tomorrow. I have to prepare, read his resume one more time and figure out what I'm going to talk about. But, um, hey, if you guys have, you, if you have ever interviewed people before, if you have advice, that would be, that would be good. I would take some advice. Well, friends, thank you so much for being there. I love you. And I do. When I say I love you, I do I do love you because, I mean, it's easy to love. And it just takes a lot of energy to hate. So, love. Sayonara.